Let's talk about the modulus operation. But before we do that, it's good to talk about it in terms of division. If I ask you what 6 divided by 2 is, hopefully you're familiar with what that means. And 6 divided by 2 would give us 3. All right, now if I asked you what 7 divided by 2 is, well, depending on how far you are in math, you'd probably say 3.5. But in grade school, I remember having to do remainders. So I would say, hey, it's 3, but then I have this leftover 1 that's kind of doing nothing. <laughs> All right, let's do 8 divided by 2. Well, that's nice and clean. That's going to be 3 again, no remainder there. In fact, we can even explicitly say 3 remainder 0. There is no remainder. Now let's try some different numbers here. Let's do 3. Let's divide by 3 instead of by 2. Let's say 6. That's a bad 6. Divided by 3. Well, that is 2. All right, now 7 divided by 3. Well, that is 2 as well. It could be 2.3222233. Or I could say it's 2 with a remainder of 1. Okay, sticking with integers here, counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and their negative counterparts. Let's try 8 divided by 3. Well, 8 divided by 3 is also 2 with a remainder of 2. All right, 9, that looks like a popsicle stick. Well, that's from grade school there. 9 divided by 3, well, that's equal to 3 with no remainder. And generally, when there is no remainder, we simply just write the result like so. Well, computers think the same way, except they really don't care about the remainders. Right? They truncate off the remainders. We do division. That's fine. No remainder for you. We'll just 7 divided by 3 is 2. 8 divided by 3 is 2 as well. 6 divided by 3 is 2 as well. 9 divided by 3 is 3, though, because 3 evenly goes into 9, so on, so forth. In higher level languages like C++, C Sharp, Java, all those languages, we actually use this forward slash symbol for our division. Now in assembly, we don't have a forward slash, we just say divide. But in higher level languages, we also have another symbol, the percent sign. So let me just take this equation here, 6 divided by 3 equals, but then instead of saying divide by 3, let's just use the percent sign, which looks like a division. And what that is called is the modulus operation. It gives us the remainder. So 6 divided by 3 is 2 with no remainder. Remember, this is remainder 0. So 6 modded by 3 is actually 0. Moving on to this next one, 7 modded by 3 is remainder of 1. Okay, 8 modded by 3 that gives us 2. 9 modded by 3. Well, look at that. We're back at 0. Right, now, I could continue this pattern on and on, but what we would see is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And we'll never hit 3. Okay, the remainder can't be 3 because when it's 3, we have an, in, we have an even division. All right? It goes in perfectly. 3 into 9 goes perfectly 3 times. Thus, our remainder is 0. And we can change the number 3 with any number we want. We could do 5, and so we'd get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We can do any number we want. Well, we can use this to our advantage to figure out if a number is even or if it is odd. Let me erase all this, and let's, let's try using the number 2 instead of 3. Let's use the number 2, and let's just start at the beginning. So 0 mod... 2. That has the remainder. 0 divided by 2 has a remainder of 0. Okay, 1 mod 2. How many times does 2 go into 1? Well, it doesn't. So that gives us a remainder of 1. Let's do 2 modded by 2. Well, hopefully that one's obvious. That's a remainder of 0. And then we have 3 modded by 2. Well, that will give us a remainder of 1. 4 modded by 2. That will give us a remainder of 0. 5 modded by 2. That will give us a remainder of 1. Do you see the pattern here? Let's do a couple more. 6 modded by 2. 
Well, 2 goes evenly into 6, so that'll be a 0. And then 7 modded by 2, that equals a 1. So all we need to do to check if something is odd or even is perform a modulus with 2. And if the result comes out as a 0, then we know 2 divided cleanly into that number. Thus, the number must be even. But if the remainder comes out as a 1, we know that the number must be odd because the number divided by 2 would leave a leftover 1, and thus it is odd. Now, in our original problem, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're just counting there. And then the, on the even numbers, we do an addition. And on the odd numbers, we do a multiplication. So 0, do an addition. Odd, do a multiplication. Even, addition. Odd, multiplication. Even, addition. Odd, multiplication. And do you remember how we can get the remainder of a division? We've seen that in previous videos. But, but if you need to, rewind back and look at them. Or just, uh, <laughs> you can allow me to tell you again. The way I like to remember is, as I can remember, the EDX, EAX register pair is... EDX holds the overflow when we do a multiply. The divide, however, is the other way. We we stick the answer in EAX, and then the remainder is placed into EDX. Okay? So we're going to use that to our advantage in the next video to essentially every iteration of the loop check and say, hey, if we're even, then do the addition. Otherwise, if we're odd, do the multiplication, so on and so forth.